Let me start again. Thank you all so much uh, for your patience today. We've had quite an overwhelming turnout, so we're still checking a few people in. Uh, I'm Kate Seeley with the Middle East Institute, and uh, thank you for joining us for this very timely discussion about developments in Syria. Uh, we're very fortunate to have with us an excellent group of Syria uh, panelists who are going to be lending uh, their insight uh, and experience into this question of um, the developments in Syria and a potential solution to the spiraling crisis. Uh, these last 10 days have been quite horrifying um, uh, in Syria with the start of the Ramadan crackdown on Hama, followed by the crackdown on Deir Ezzor and Abu Kamal. It is continuing as we speak. Hundreds have reportedly been killed uh, the, the, the bloodbath of the last 10 days has, however, prompted finally a more robust international response to what's happening in Syria on August 3rd. The Security Council finally issued a statement. It was rather anemic, uh, but it condemned the violence. Uh, and that got other powers moving. The Saudis, who've been conspicuously uh, quiet uh, on this issue, finally over the weekend uh, issued a statement with King Abdullah uh, basically calling uh, for an end to the killing machine. The next day, uh, Saudi, Bahrain, and Kuwait all recalled their ambassadors. And, of course, many of us here are familiar with yesterday's six-hour meeting between the Turkish foreign minister and Assad. Um, supposedly, uh, the Turks went to sort of lay down an ultimatum. Uh, the results of that meeting, of course, um, have yet to be seen. And now uh, there are reports that the Obama administration is preparing to finally uh, issue a much a stronger uh, condemnation of Syria, actually calling for Bashar al-Assad to step down. Um, that is possibly going to be coming out in the next day or two. So clearly international condemnation and censure is building. However, the Syrians are uh, notoriously impervious to outside pressure. Uh, still, the growing criticism from the Arabs are bound to be making them uh, nervous. In a possible sign of dissent, uh, the Syrian defense minister, Ali Habib, uh, was asked to step down due to health reasons the other day. And yesterday it was reported uh, that he died from those health reasons. Others claim that he was assassinated, uh, possibly because he's been critical of uh, the, the actions being taken by the regime, and I'm sure what Radwan and Osama will address that. Um, still, there have been no serious defections within the army, and while the provinces burn, uh, the major cities remain largely quiet, especially Aleppo, uh, where there have been no very few protests, I gather, sort of unwilling to trade its economic good fortune for the uncertainties of change. And um, how that change will come about and who will help lead that change, of course, um, uh, is the million-dollar question. Our speakers today are going to touch upon these issues, uh, bringing their unique insight to this very important discussion. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to introduce them very briefly. Their full bios are on the handouts that I gave you, and I'll uh, be introducing them in the order uh, in which they'll be speaking. Uh, Radwan Ziedi is the founder and director of the Damascus Center for Human Rights Studies in Syria and co-founder and executive director of the Syrian Center uh, for Political and Strategic Studies here in D.C., and I should note that he's one of the key voices of the Syrian opposition in exile with many, many close contacts in Syria. Usama Munajid is currently the executive director of the London-based Strategic Research and Communication Center, which provides research and commentary on Syria to media and governments. Uh, he's also been very involved in the protests using social media to coordinate between protest organizers throughout Syria. Uh, Ambassador uh, Theodore Katouf is the president of Ahmed East, a leading nonprofit educational organization that works in the Middle East. Uh, a former foreign service office officer, he has served twice in Syria, uh, first as the deputy chief of mission and then as ambassador from 2001 to 2003. Andrew Tabler, last but not least, has very kindly agreed to fill in for Alan Makovsky, who could not make it today. Uh, Andrew, unfortunately, has to leave a little bit early, but we're still very uh, appreciative that he's here. Andrew is a Next Generation Fellow in the Program on Arab Politics at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He spent many years living and working in Damascus and is the author of the forthcoming book, in the Lion's Den, an eyewitness account of Washington's battle with Syria, which comes out September 1st. So please do 
uh, look for that. It is a great privilege and honor to have everybody with us today. I want to thank them for joining us. I also want to thank uh, Anne and Peter Tannis uh, for their wonderful support of MEI's programming. Uh, due to them, we're here in this room, which clearly is not large enough. I apologize. Uh, but they're also, um, they've also provided today's lunch. So many thanks to them. I also want to alert you very quickly to a journal that we're selling, our spring issue that has several articles on Syria, one on the origins of the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria, a key player in the opposition, and one on the um, Assad regime itself. So take a look at this. Uh, do what, buy one on your way out and uh, become an MAI member at the same time. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to um, invite Radwan Ziade to the podium. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kate, for the nice introduction, and thank you for uh, this opportunity. Uh, let me begin, actually, with, uh, with the impact of, of Ramadan, how the, the Ramadan will be a critical month, actually, for the Syrian uprising. Uh, since March 15, where, actually, the uprising started in Syria, the protest getting more uh, uh, momentum regarding the size of the protest, with the same time, uh, start calling, asking for steps of reform, but as the response of the regime uh, by life ammunition and more killings, the, the slogans, it was actually much more deep, uh, 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 deeper in the change and calling for the, uh, the outset of, of Bashar al-Assad. Uh, but at the same time, it has lasted for uh, five months. With the same time, the protests cannot get the momentum. With the same time, the core of the circle core of, of, of the regime is still solid. Uh, we don't see any defection in the high senior generals. We don't see any defection among, actually, the, uh, the ministers or, or, or the parliament. This is why the, 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 the protest, uh, protesters actually prepare themselves for Ramadan, since uh, every single day in Ramadan will be actually Friday. Friday, it became the, the, the day of prayer in, in, in the Muslim societies, but that doesn't mean or reflect that it's uh, uh, the main call or the main purpose of this uh, Syrian uprising is religion or something like that. But because under 47 years of, of dictatorship and state of emergency, the people, they cannot get together without, uh, within, in, in only in the mosque or the churches. Because otherwise, they can. Uh, uh, you you have to get the permission to get even that such gathering of a few people, and this is why they they use the opportunity in pray in, on Friday to start the protest, where actually their numbers much much bigger than the number of the security officer, the security persons, and this is why being became the mosque actually the main uh, 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 the main point of of to start the the, the protest. And this is why the regime was reacted on that just one day before Ramadan with a huge military operation in the largest three cities where actually became the flashpoint of, of, of the protest in Homs and Hama and Deir Zor. In Hama itself, in the last uh, few weeks, they have at least uh, half a million on the al Asi square, one of the main squares in Hama, there is no incident about any in, one injured or any killings or su armed gangs where actually the, the, the Syrian propaganda, they're beating that. And Anthony Shadid smuggled there in the New York Times and wrote very interesting pieces on Hama and Homs. And he, he, he claimed himself that ne he never see any, any, any guns in, in, in Hama itself. And this is why uh, we give some explanation why the, the harsh response of by military operation just before Ramadan, because they need to send a single to the other cities, that if they do protest, that the, the response will be exactly like they did in Dara in April, with the collective punishment, they cut the electricity, water, of course, all, the, all means of communication, uh, cell phones, and not allowing even that for food or, or medical supply. There is a story. We need actually more, 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 uh, uh, um, more maybe confirmation or investigation about the the baby borns in the hospital of Al Hamwi, uh, Al Hurani Hospital in Hama, where actually they cut the electricity, and this is why they called uh, the military to have some gasoline. They refused to give them, and all the baby born have been died in the hospital. 